The Steel City struck gold with Big Ben. Roethlisberger, will this kid ever lose? That foot just don't give us a game, I'm telling you. Touchdown, Jacksonville! Here in Jacksonville, we got some of the best fans. They really are our 12th man. Walking down the street and just hearing someone yell, Go Steelers, is the greatest feeling. Our cardiac kids have heart. Win, Jacksonville! Got burgers named after him all over the city. Around here, he's known as Lord Byron. Their emotion, the momentum, it's all there with Roethlisberger. Green Jaguars! In this game, we know it's a challenge for us. We have no margin for error right now. Time to go out there and win this football game. Sunday night, Sunday night. The Steelers and the Jaguars take the field here in Jacksonville for their only primetime appearance of the entire season. It's the same place, Altel Stadium, where each would like to be this February for Super Bowl 39. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick. It's great to have you with us. Both of these teams believe in the same thing run the football and stop the other team from running the football there's nothing fancy about it nothing cute it's old school and most of the time it works the jaguars are six and five and that doesn't get it done in the afc and the players have been very open about it this week for them the playoffs start tonight for the Steelers, they come in 10 and 1. That is their best start in 30 years. And if they can keep winning, they will earn home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And Joe, the most fascinating thing about it, they're doing it with a rookie quarterback. But is he really a rookie? Ben Roethlisberger was taken in this year's draft. As a matter of fact, he's playing with a chip on his shoulders. Eli Manning and Phillip Rivers were two quarterbacks who were taken ahead of him. Well, as far as Ben concerned, he was the best of the bunch, and he's proving it. All he has to do is manage this football game for the Steelers and hand the ball off. Byron Leftwich, same story here. In his second year, now starting to get comfortable. He realizes that he has to run the football and hand it off. But I think it's going to be different for Byron Leftwich. I believe tonight he's going to have to put the ball in the air against the Steeler defense if the Jags have a chance. All right, Joe. The Steelers do get Deuce Staley back tonight. And he will be the starting running back, but Paul, we will still see a lot of the ageless wonder, Jerome Bettis. Five weeks ago, when Deuce Stanley went down, 32-year-old Jerome Bettis picked it up. He averaged in the last four games 30 carries per game and over 120 yards rushing. We had a chance to talk to head coach Jack Del Rio of Jacksonville. He said, you cannot win in the National Football League unless you can run the football. Well, in the last three weeks, Fred Taylor, their running back, is averaging 25 carries per game and over 100 yards. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a smash-mouth football game, and they're both going to bring it. Thank you, Paul. There is a unique relationship between the young starting quarterbacks on these clubs. More on that from Susie Culver when we come back. Vote in the 12th Man Challenge for the team who has the best home field advantage because of their fans. Log on to ESPN.com. Every vote is a chance to win. Presented by eBay, the power of all of us. Welcome back to Jacksonville and the Battle of the Mac. As in Mid-American Conference, both of tonight's starting quarterbacks came out of the Mac and both have had to endure the stigma of playing against lesser competition than the big division one schools. Doesn't seem to have hurt them in the NFL. 
Byron Leftwich and Ben Roethlisberger also happen to be very good friends. After all, how often do opposing quarterbacks go out to dinner the night before the game? But these two have been pals since their days of Miami of Ohio against Marshall. Two head-to-head -head meetings in college the last 2001. Ben, a freshman, threw for more than 200 yards. But Byron, a junior, walked away with bragging rights for the second straight time. I asked each what impressed them about the other. Every time you look, you know, even when he was in college, he's always making plays, you know, outside the pocket. You know, even when he was college, he was, he can make a bad play and turn it into a good play. And he almost do it every time. The way he's a leader, um, the way the guys rally around him, all the way from college when guys are carrying him down the field because he's got a hurt leg, to here when guys are helping him up and just the things that he does, uh, and then the obvious things, the way he throws the ball and things like that, it's just, he, he's so much fun to watch. Both the great tonight's matchup is personal. And by the way, it was Ben who bought dinner because Miami of Ohio lost to Marshall in a MAC championship three days ago. Mike, so much more on the line tonight. This isn't about dinner, it's about making the playoffs. And Susie will learn one of these days you don't have to be from one of the big schools to be a big time quarterback in the NFL. ESPN presents Visa Skycam, innovative technology on ESPN the worldwide leader in sports. Visa Sky Cam provides some of the most unique and memorable images ever seen from angles no other single camera in the world can achieve. And we are excited to bring it to you every Sunday night. Huge game in Jacksonville. We'll be back for the kickoff in a moment. ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. The AFC division leaders right now updated with today's results. New England, Pittsburgh, of course, San Diego, and Indianapolis. The worst division leading record, 9-3. The Jets are 9-3, then come Baltimore, Denver, and Jacksonville. But the Jaguars, with a win tonight, would move into second place in the playoff race among wildcard teams. That is how big this game is for them. When you think of this football game, it's almost like these two teams are not in separate divisions. They've played each other for so many years. The rivalry exists. David Allen is deep to receive Jermaine Lewis on the injured list for Jacksonville. The Jaguars wearing all black tonight. Allen from the four. Hit up around the neck and taken down at the 20. The Jaguars have committed to run the ball more. That's just fine with Brad Meester, the veteran center who has started all 75 games of his career tonight. He is wired for sound. In his 12th year, Jimmy Smith keeps producing for the Jaguars offense. He's sixth in the NFL with 909 receiving yards. And Fred Taylor, a premier running back, without the premier reputation, he has almost 1,300 yards in total offense. He's ninth in the NFL in Russia. They open with three wide receivers. Troy Edwards is the third man. Somebody jumps up front, and Taylor will get two, maybe three yards before he's brought down. And there's a marker down at the line of scrimmage. You will see a lot of activity by the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Offside. Defense, number 55. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. A lot of activity by that defense. Jack Del Rio is from Baltimore, and he realizes the type of it's active, it's mobile, it's quick, and it'll hit you. It's Balls. active, and you're looking at a. That time it was Joey Porter, number 55, who was a linebacker that was offside. Kyle Brady and Todd Yoder come in as a double tight end set for the Jaguars and a single back. Blitz coming left, which unloads. It's incomplete. The pass was intended for Reggie Williams, knocked away by James Carrier. The Steelers have the number one defense in the league, and Aaron Smith is having a career season. He has eight sacks, number one on the team. Ferrier may be having a better year than anyone. He leads the team in tackles and all NFL linebackers with three interceptions. 
the investment in Troy Polamalu is starting to pay off. Last year's top draft choice has four picks this year. They said Polamalu on a blitz last time. Second and five. Taylor breaks one tackle. Gets a couple of yards, given three. He's out to the 28-yard line. Larry Foote made the tackle. When Fred Taylor, the seven-year veteran, is healthy, I think he's as good as anybody. He just never gets that kind of credit. Well, the problem, you know, the thing about it is, no, no one really realized this guy's played the last 43 straight games. But he, in his first couple of years, he was hurt a lot, and people really don't recognize this guy it, as well as he can run. This guy has got a lot of power, and they depend on him. Like I said before, they're going to try to run him at least 25 times a game. Third call at three. He's a 234-pound back, although he didn't look that big. Blitz coming. Taylor with a great block. And Jimmy Smith can't get it down the sideline. Willie Williams was there to knock the ball away. Every single down, the Pittsburgh Steelers blitz. But Every I single down. I really believe that this was very important for the Jacksonville Jaguars. They picked up the blitzes. Watch what this offensive line does in the back. Look at the job that Fred Smith, uh, uh, that Fred uh, Taylor does. Now you get the ball up the field. Jimmy Smith just would have caught it out of bounds anyway. But I think it was really important that they picked up the blitzes. Chris Hansen will punt to Antoine Randall L., the very dangerous receiver. That punt, long and sky high. Randall L. will make the catch the 22, a 50-yard punt. The Steelers' offensive line anchors the number two rushing game in the league. Alan Fanica, three-time Pro Bowl pick, regarded by many as the game's best. Hines Ward is a three-time Pro Bowl pick as well. An excellent receiver and the best blocking wide receiver in football. Deuce Staley is ready to go after being out a month with a hamstring. He's been averaging a snazzy 4.7 yards a carry. And don't be surprised to see Jacksonville do the same thing the Pittsburgh Steelers did. We've got a young quarterback. They've got to go after him. A sellout, possibly record crowd going crazy at the start of the ball game. Play action by Roethlisberger. Plenty of time, and now he takes off and slides into the 28-yard line. The Jaguars' defense has been very tough, especially up the middle against the run game. Ben Roethlisberger adds a dimension to this offense that has really kept him, I think, given the chance to win these games. He will take off and run with the football instead of try and force one in and throw an interception. More play action. Roethlisberger on the run, too strong, knocked away, incomplete. Dwayne Washington knocked it down. The Jaguars defense has two of the best defensive tackles in the league. Marcus Stroud, tough against the run, also gets a great rush going after the passer. At only 230 pounds, Mike Peterson is one of the smallest middle linebackers in years, but he thrives with 127 tackles. And Donovan Darius is the heart of this defense, a natural leader. He has been a constant in a changing secondary. Third and five. Four-man rush. Roethlisberger again takes off. Throws on the run, complete to Hines Ward down to the 48. First down, it's a gain of 23. I'll tell you, the pressure comes up the middle. They only ran a four-man rush. They did not blitz Ben Roethlisberger. They came after him with just four. So they roll him out of the pocket, but the guy that makes the play is Heinz Ward is double teamed right in the middle. Then he sees Roethlisberger leave. Look at him get deep behind the linebackers. Watch this. He's going to sit right 86, sits there. He's covered. Now he sees Ben running. He runs. Perfect. And remember what Bill Cower said. When they were blitzing up the middle, it didn't seem to bother him, so they started to come from the outside. And Donovan Darius led that charge. 
Deuce Staley was buried in the backfield. Look at the first four plays of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Three passes. The first one, Ben throws incomplete. The second one, he darn near gets his head taken off. The third one, he's running for his life. The fourth one, the Jags stuff it down their throat. This defense is going to figure out what Ben can and cannot do, and you watch the pressure they start to add on him. They don't get in too many second and longs. The Steelers' offense does it. Second and 11 here. Staley to the outside. Cuts it back, picks up six, maybe seven yards. The deuce is loose again after being out with a hamstring for a month. 151 carries, 707 yards. And he's been a great addition coming over as a free agent from the Eagles. Don't you like what Bill Cowher said about Deuce Daly and Jerome Bettis? He said, I always thought you needed a big back and a little back. He said, then I thought maybe you needed two little backs. He said, wrong. What you need in the National Football League are two big backs that can run. And they have them. Willie Parker comes in. He's number 39 as the third down back. Roethlisberger underneath again, and Hines Ward has the first down of the Jaguars 37. Dwayne Washington, the former Steeler, was there to make the tackle. Ben Roethlisberger does a nice time, nice job this time hanging in the pocket. Everybody says, don't look at your receiver, don't look at your receiver. That's a bunch of baloney. You have to look at where you throw the football. Everybody, Eventually. Oh, yeah, don't stare him down. It's up to the receiver to get open, and if you're looking at him, it makes it a little easier to throw it. That time you saw Ben execute it. Hard to throw to a guy you're not looking at, isn't it? Kreider's the only one back as a blocking back now. And Hines Ward again. Ward, 10-5, touchdown. Aiken Adell came on the blitz, and Deuce Staley at 242 pounds was there to pick him up and protect his quarterback. Boy, Deuce Staley's been away for four weeks, but I'll tell you, he's not lost any blocking techniques. Watch 22. Bang! I mean, he steps up the edge wide open down the middle of the field as Hines Ward. Touchdown. Look at Hines Ward. Did he get open? Well, I'll tell you what. This guy is the toughest receiver in the entire National Football League. Hines Ward caught three passes on that drive. Got his fourth touchdown catch of the year. And the Steelers have broken on top here in Jacksonville, going for their 11th win in 12 starts this year. Great start for Roethlisberger. No rookie has ever done what Ben Roethlisberger has done so far when his first nine games. And what a drive he engineered there. Seven plays, 77 yards, took less than four minutes off the clock. And he hit three out of four passes under some pretty good pressure from the Jaguars. Reed to kick again to David Allen. Allen this time from the eight. Had a seam up the middle and takes it to the 26-yard line. Byron Leftwich now has to bring his team from behind. We're in the first quarter in Jacksonville. ESPN Sunday Night Football brought to you by Subway. It's what to eat when you want to eat fresh. Subway, eat fresh. T. Rowe Price, invest with confidence. The redesigned Toyota Camry, now that's moving you forward. And Campbell's Chunky Soup, with big chunks of meat and veggies, it fills you up right. The Navy went over Army, very popular down here this weekend. There are three naval bases in the Jacksonville area. Of course, a hello to all our men and women in the service out there. God bless her. Best to him. Greg Jones is in the block for Fred Taylor. For Jacksonville as they start their second drive. And Taylor covering up that football. Goes across the 35 to the 36. Just shy of a first down. Now you're going to see why they want to give Fred Taylor the ball at least 25 times a ball game. You know, he, he was smiling with us the other day. He's very healthy. But watch him run. This guy can deliver a blow. He sees a hole to the left, 
and he just pops inside. That's Joey Porter not being able to bring him down. Joey Porter can bring most people down, but not this guy. He doesn't run, he gallops. Well, he's, he's a galloper. Steelers show blitz and come with it. Taylor runs into a wall, bounces off of it, and has a first down. Let's check in with Susie. Well, Mike, you guys in the first series were talking about Fred Taylor and how he would feel about going relatively unnoticed, even though he's had all these great years. And he said he did have a harder time with it when he was younger because he felt he deserved the accolades. But after four losing seasons, he doesn't care. He just wants wins. He said he hates losing. He said doesn't even like losing to his kids. Some guys say that. He really means it. <laughs> well, Susie, he was overshadowed when Mark Brunel was here. Uh, when the team first got the franchise, Brunel, Jimmy Smith, and Keenan McCardell. Taylor, again, he'll pick up about four this time. And the quarterback left, which came out, may have been stepped on and stumbled, just barely got the handoff where he was. Well, Byron Leftwich has a brace on his left leg. Now, he comes out, and, oh, he, he yep. just trips over the guard. But he gets... He gets the, the ball from Fred Taylor, but he's been wearing that brace for, what, almost two, two years now? Yeah, but he doesn't like it. No, it just, just the last couple of weeks, he's, it's not very comfortable for him. Second and seven. Steelers come with a blitz again. Left, which is not terribly mobile. Takes off and then completes the pass to another former Steeler, Troy Edwards. The 13th overall pick in the 99 draft by Pittsburgh. You saw Byron Leftwich move around. I mean, he's wearing that brace because he hurt his knee a couple weeks ago, missed the last two games. He's he's not the most mobile guy in the world, but you see with that brace on, he's still able to get around pretty well. He said he's about 85%, but then when I asked him, he said everybody's about 85%. Did you see what he did after he threw that ball? Because Edwards went toward the sideline. He was running downfield to throw a block. I don't think he'd have caught him. But it no, but it was, it was the effort. <laughs> Fumatu Ma'afala, another former Steeler. This has become Pittsburgh South. Well, there's four former Pittsburgh Steelers on the Jacksonville team. And there's only one on the Pittsburgh team. Oh. <laughs> well, they don't. Oh. <laughs> they, they give up some, but they don't take many back. Well, Bill Cower pretty much builds this franchise from the bottom up. I mean, everything is within. What a great job he has done as head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Through all the transitions and the free agencies and people leaving and moving around, he has kept this team at the top. Maafala stays in as the running back, and now Jimmy Smith with his first catch. Another first down. Smith to the 33-yard line. Brought down by Deshae Townsend, and Jimmy Smith enjoying something of a resurgence this year. Five-time Pro Bowler, and he is number 12th all-time in the NFL in catches, number 14 all-time in yards. It was something, in talking to Jimmy Smith, it was almost very simple of why he's having the year he's having. He said he's learned how to take care of himself, learned how to get rest, learned how to eat. Now he's physically fit and able to handle the season. Leftwich, good protection, now he takes off. Dives inside the 30. And I'll tell you what, this, this, this is very good blocking up front by Jacksonville. And, and watch Leftwich here. When he goes back and he sees no one open, he feels the pressure back from the outside. And when he feels that pressure, he only go, I like what he did. He only goes as far as he thinks he can go without getting whacked and gets down. The other thing I liked about him is he was very decisive. A lot of times guys aren't sure whether they want to throw a run when they hit that point. He just made the decision to go. You can't make a lot of mistakes when you do that. Taylor is back in. Fred Taylor. A great block by Greg Jones. He just upended a blitzing linebacker. Does, I mean, that was unreal. Does he send him airborne? It was Polamalu. Watch, Watch this. Number 43 tries to leap. <laughs> oh. And Greg and Jones, Jones said, helped him. Yeah, you want to go? I'll send you up. Hello. Goodbye. Well, that's Polamalu. That, he's the one that do, took himself out of the play. The Russian judge <laughs> gave it a 9-5. Yeah. Ukrainian judge gave it an 8. I'll tell you one thing. 
you realize you don't need to be doing that stuff against this football team or any football team. That's the way he plays. Third and two, only one wide receiver. Ma'afala. Boy, there's some big guys out there button heads tonight. Ma'afala, six feet, 252, and he's a tailback. Well, remember at the beginning when I said it's going to be smash mouth. Watch this. Watch his offensive line. Now, what they just did right there is just take the white shirts of Pittsburgh Steelers back. And when you move them back, you're going to pick up that three and four yards. And that's the number one overall defense and the number one rush defense in the National Football League. That's what they were moving. Yeah, but running the football is nothing but attitude. And right now, the Jags have got an attitude. They want to pound it. Tenth play of the drive. Taylor. We're going to give it to Fred Taylor, I think, 25 times in the first quarter. I think so, too. <laughs> He's going to get his quota. And Dick LeBeau, the longtime defensive coordinator, comes back in that role again this year and has certainly made a difference. He's, he's one of the, uh, the fathers of this defense going back years and years. He is the father. I saw him on the field before the game, and I said, it's great to have you back. You know what he said? It's just great to be back. The man loves his ball club, and he loves the game. And they have the same respect for him. Well, don't they ever. Second and nine. Taylor with a man in his face. Knocked down, actually, by his own blocker and pushed back a couple of yards. And that time, led by Van Von Olhoffen, that Steeler defensive line surged. Remember the last play when the black shirts took the white shirts out? Watch this one. Here come the white shirts. And when they get penetration, Van Olhoffen, he's there, number 67. When they get that kind of penetration, I don't care who you are, you're not going to make it back to the line of scrimmage. And he's going up again against Ephraim Salam, number 76, who has struggled in the last couple of games. They've even talked about putting Bob Whit Whitfield back in there. Third down and long. Leftwich guns and it's complete to Edwards. Edwards breaks a tackle. Touchdown. The former Steeler, a Boletnikoff Award winner in college, gets the touchdown. It's his first of the year. You'll see Willie Williams try and bring him down. Catches it over the middle. They got a shot at him. That's, I'm sorry, Chris Hope was the guy that had a shot at him, and he just spins right out of it. What toughness. Well, you just got to bring yourself into this game and say, you know what? People are going to hit me. I got to hit people. Jacksonville had scored only 14 points all year in the first quarter, the second fewest in the NFL. But that was huge. They have tied the Steelers at seven on a 22-yard touchdown pass. It's exactly what we expected. Both teams just trying to shove it down the other's throat. That time the Jaguars went 73 yards in 12 plays and took nearly eight minutes off the clock. The Steelers lead the NFL in time of possession. That time the Jaguars showed them how they could do it too. Copley and Taylor deep for the return for the Steelers. Ike Taylor. Taken down at the 28-yard line. Deke Cooper on the tackle. And the rookie out of Miami of Ohio, who has not lost as a starter, will have it when we come back. First quarter in Jacksonville. That's Friendship Fountain across the river. Just beautiful down here on the waterfront. Mike, one of the things that, that Jacksonville would like to do defensively, they told us, is to, to keep Ben Roethlisberger in the pocket. In that first series, they did not. Staley behind Kreider as they start from the 28-yard line. Deuce to the outside, pushed out of bounds. Chicken with Susie. 
Mike, the story of the night. Two quarterbacks, old friends and rivals since college, both answering the call. Ben Roethlisberger, the rookie, to the veteran, Hines Ward for the touchdown on his very first drive. But Byron Leftwich answers to former Steeler Troy Edwards, tied at seven. It's going to be a battle, and it's personal. Boy, it's been a beauty so far. Two of the biggest quarterbacks you will ever see. These guys are enormous. Stegley to the outside. And surges forward very close to a first down. Ben Roethlisberger really didn't come out just handing the ball off. He came out trying to get the ball in the air a little bit. Does a nice job. Doesn't want to force it, so he decides to take off and run. Again, he feels pressure, gets outside, finds Hines Ward in the little soft belly of the defense, and then throws the nice corner stepping into it, and Hines does the rest. Very poised. I, you know, I don't know whether you want to keep him in a pocket. I think you need to put somebody in his face somehow, not just standing in that pocket. He was so impressive when he met, we met with him. Hines Ward on the end of round. And gang tackle. He'll lose a yard. Dwayne Washington makes an excellent play. He is the safety. He came up inside. Excuse me. He's a right corner. He comes up. Watch number 30. He beats the block on the outside. He doesn't make the tackle on Hines Ward, but he slowed him up enough so his other guys could get there. And that's a difference of seven yards by breaking that tackle. We have a flag on the play. Came in late with guys uh, apparently... Still on the ground, pushing and shoving. It's going to be against Jacksonville. I think that's the one thing you have to be careful of. In a, in a game with this much intensity, you want to be able to keep your guys calm and cool and not have them make critical mistakes. Don't do stupid things. I mean, you know, it, it's hard enough beating a team like the Pittsburgh Steelers, but don't add to it. Rather lengthy discussion. Both of these coaches, uh, you know, with tough guy reputations, and they earned it. They both played in the league. Bill Cowher, a special teams star for five years. Jack Del Rio, one year, went to the Pro Bowl. He was an outstanding linebacker. Have you ever seen Bill Cowher that relaxed as he was last night? I, I, I never have. There is no foul for contacting the official. The contact was accidental. Oh, what a nice job. What a nice job by the officials on that one. Will you record this? I'm it telling is you. December the 5th. Bill Vinovich, one of the two rookies that we have as referees in the league this year, because Johnny Greer went down, but Bill was going to be the only one. Nice job of uh, understanding the intensity of this game. Oh, okay. Jerome what Bettis, the veteran out of Notre Dame, 12 years, who has had 100 yards rushing the last four games. The oldest back in the history of this league ever to do that. He has been brilliant. And the bus gets the ball and takes off, dragging <laughs> people with him. Mike Peterson, who's 230 pounds, gives he's the middle linebacker. He gives up 25 pounds to the bus. That's the end of the first quarter. It's the Steelers 7 and the Jaguars 7 from Jacksonville. Who do you think had the best day in the NFL? How about Drew Bledsoe Buffalo? Kevin Jones of Detroit rushed for nearly 200 yards. Peyton, of course, he's in every week. Donovan McNabb, what a day he had. That was a half. Yeah, yeah that was and a half. And left us 148 yards. Seriously, that was right a right now by logging on to ESPN.com <laughs> or NFL.com. We'll give you the results in the fourth quarter. Willie Parker comes in for the Steelers. Roethlisberger throws to Antoine Randall L, who makes a few moves and is inside the Jacksonville 30-yard line, gain of 14. Nice pick by Chris Doring, number 83, who's really active because Plexico Burris is down. They've missed him the last couple of games, and I really think this offense misses Plexico's big play ability. But this was just a nice little pick on the outside. Anytime you can get the ball in the hands, of Antoine Randall, Lots of things can happen. There's Plex. I think he's made a world of difference. He's and got a hamstring injury, and really, there's almost nobody behind Hyde's Ward and Antoine Randall L. 
the uh, steel is really thin at wide receiver without Burris. We'll be back to check on the injury in a moment. <laughs> Quarterback talent from the Mac on display tonight. And they have both had successful first quarter. Ben Roethlisberger, the rookie. For opening drive, Hines Ward was the big star. And then Edwards, the touchdown pass from Byron Leftwich. We're tied at seven. Pittsburgh has reached the Jacksonville 38-yard line. Deuce. And he's down to the 33-yard line. Both of these teams are so strong defensively. And we told you at the beginning of the telecast, this is big for the Steelers because they want to preserve home field advantage. It's huge for the Jaguars because they can leap two teams if they can win tonight in the wild card race. Well, I'll tell you, if it is that huge for the Jaguars, they sure are relaxed today because they're playing extremely well. Well, they're comfortable. I think there's a familiarity. They realize that this is going to be toe-to-toe, -to -toe, hard nosed football. It's exactly the way the Jacksonville Jaguars want to play. Second and six, Staley again. Moving the pile down to the 30. The real disadvantage to me that Jacksonville has right now, they have two great defensive tackles. Their defensive ends, Bobby McCray is 251 pounds. Greg Favors is 244. They're really both linebackers. They have lost their top six defensive ends. The top six. And Bobby McCray is a seventh round pick rookie. But yet the Pittsburgh Steelers are still trying to run that ball up the middle. And they said they would not go away from the two big guys. Third and a yard. Deuce. First down. Lowered his shoulder and smashed into Tommy Hendricks, who brought it down. Alan Fanica, you mentioned him at the top of the show, Mike, number 66, the guard. They watch him come out. Here goes Fanica. He almost stumbles but yet he's got enough presence of mind to find a linebacker and make the block in the hole look at deuce staley staying right behind fanica he sees his block he knows he only needs a, one job one yard excuse me three years in a row he has been to the pro bowl and a lot of people think he's the best lineman overall in this league Staley again looked like he had a little trouble with a handoff throughout the timing and he only got about a yard and a half before Derek Ransom number 90 out of Cincinnati made the stop Ben Roethlisberger everybody wants to call him a rookie a rookie a rookie I know he's setting all these so-called rookie records I just think he's a football player the one thing that's impressed me about him at the time I spent around him I played in Mario Lemieux's golf tournament this offseason with him he has a real confidence about his ability to play this game and he showed it he's a rookie ah, he's a young guy he's a rookie he's a young good quarterback <laughs> <laughs> i love it up here roethlisberger right down the middle touchdown that's what happens Reimers when he the, the tight end. I don't know how he got that one in there. Well, I tell you, this pass is absolutely perfect. Jay Reimersma goes up. Now, Jay Reimersma, I mean, it's, it's kind of funny. Here's a big quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, at six foot five. Jay Reimersma was a quarterback when he played at Michigan. They moved him to tight end, and now he's been in the pros for a long time. But watch where this pass is thrown. Look at Reimersma. Great hands. That's on the back side of Reimersma. He puts a real nice move on Mike Peterson, a little out and up, and then goes and makes the play. Now, keep in mind, that's only his seventh catch and his second touchdown. Perfectly thrown by Ben. Deion Grant, the free safety, came across with a late shot trying to knock it loose and what? couldn't do it. Reimersma fell on the ball. When he was going down, the ball was in his gut. He just had, I think he's got the wind knocked out of him. Now, Coach Del Rio is going to want to challenge this right away to see if he had possession when he got into the end zone. Well, from our initial viewing of it, he did. Jacksonville is, is challenging the ruling on the field for a completed pass for a touchdown. Now, we'll have a chance to look at it a few times. You say if he fell on it, Paul, maybe it was loose. We'll check on the challenge by the Jaguars when we come back. Is it a touchdown or not? 
No. ESPN Sunday Night Football brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 39. Heineken, it's all about the beer. Heineken, GMC trucks and SUVs. We are professional grade. And Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL. Get ready for the game. It's one of America's most recognizable images. The Goodyear blimp floating overhead providing these aerial pictures in high definition. The Goodyear blimp has been a familiar sight for almost 80 years over American sporting events. It was ruled a touchdown, and here is another look at the challenge. Reemersma. In the play, the receiver had possession of the ball, ruling on the field stand, touchdown. I don't, I, see, that ball is out. I, it's different, I think, than if he's going at the end. Mike, I really believe that that ball was coming out. Well, and the that ball, ball, the ball hit the ground. The ball can touch the ground as long as the receiver maintains possession, but it didn't look like he maintained control no, of it. Right, right here, he's in the end zone with his foot. He has possession, the ball comes out. See, the ball hits the ground. I mean, but you've got to have you've got to have your hands under it. Stuff. To me, that's. I think it was a touchdown right away, and what happened after it was a moot point. No, it's a, it's a very close call. The ball can move, but you have to have, you have to have control of it. And Jack Del Rio is not going to be happy with that call. But remember, the initial call was a touchdown, so you have to see indisputable evidence to overturn it. Jack Del Rio, of course, thinks it was indisputable. But the Steelers are very pleased. Hope you join us for a full night of football next Sunday on ESPN starting at 7.30 Eastern with NFL Primetime. Then Donovan McNabb, T.O. and the Eagles go to D.C. to take on Joe Gibbs Redskins. On Sunday night football, that's at 8.30 Eastern Sunday night. The Redskins scored more than 20 points, scored 31 today. Hallelujah. <laughs> that's what Joe gives a second. Yes, he is. Greg Jones on the return for the Jaguars. He's out to 25. Nice move by Jay Reemersmo on this particular play. He's the tight end, lined up on the left side at that left hash mark. Does a good job of getting down the field. A little shake outside on the middle linebacker, Mike Peterson, number 54. And then Ben Roethlisberger puts it right in the middle. When you play too deep, corners up, safety's back, you expose the middle, and the middle linebacker has to get back there. And look where Ben puts the ball. A perfect place for Remersman to make the play. There are the numbers on the young quarterbacks early in this game. Taylor cuts it outside. Got a block on the corner, picked up about eight. Boy, I'll tell you what, this guy, now you gotta understand, Fred Taylor weighs about 235 pounds. He's six foot one. And that moved to the outside. Watch this. Bang, back outside. Just quickly. He gets an excellent block downfield with by Jimmy Smith. Tell you what, you don't run the ball the way these guys do unless you've got wide receivers who are gonna throw blocks downfield. And it was right in front of Bill Cower. He thought it was a hole. They marked him out of bounds at the 34. It's second and three. Taylor again. This time turned back by James Ferrier and company. And the Steelers just contending that Ferrier is having the kind of season that defensive players of the year have. I mean, he has three sacks, three interceptions, 82 tackles, five forced fumbles, and three fumble recoveries. I guess he is having a pretty good year. You have to remember, it, you know, you figure the Pro Bowl linebackers, inside linebackers, Zach Thomas, Ray Lewis. Well, Zach Thomas is on a football team with the Dolphins that are struggling, so Ferrier should be a guy that certainly should be considered. And Ray Lewis, without question. Taylor again, nowhere to go. Polamalu came up and run support.
got him that time short of a first down. Well, the one thing about the Pittsburgh Steelers uh -oh. offensively and defensively is they are so disciplined. And the one thing about them is that they do the same things over and over and over again. They don't do anything different. Offensively, they line up, they tell you, here we come, we're going to run the ball right down your throat. Defensively, they are so disciplined on their defense that I, you know, it's hard for me to believe that you're going to try to run third and three against this defense and think you're going to pick it up. And you just got to look at uh, Troy Palomo Polamalu who has Paul's old hairstyle. I remember there that There's one. a flag on this play now. Let's see who it goes against. Well, if it's against Pittsburgh, the Jaguars got the ball. Defense, number 55. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. It's Joey Porter again. Now, Joey Porter, keep in mind, a few weeks ago was the one that got in the fighting with uh, William Green in the Cleveland Brown game and was suspended for that game. So before the game started. Before the game ever started. So he runs real hot. And Bill Cower, well, I'll let a picture tells a thousand words when it comes to Bill. I think this is a situation where Bill Cower's chin shoots out six feet. See? He's yelling at Joey. He's you're he's wrong. You're wrong. Joey's going to keep on doing these things wrong, and as great a football player as he is, Bill's not going to care. No, at some point, at some point, you just hurt your team too much. Now, here's Paul Amalo. Now, he's going to start it, stepping over Fred Taylor, and I don't know how Paul Amalo did not get 15 yards for that. I, and they blame Joey Porter, who was standing there. Leftwich back to throw. Three-man rush. Takes off again, dumps it to Taylor. When Taylor just ducked under an, what would have been an enormous collision with Clark Hagens, who went flying by. That's Kimo Van Olhoff, and again was putting the pressure on. But you know, we we're on our way over here tonight, and Joe said in the car, the team that doesn't make the stupid mistakes, the dumb mistakes in this game, are gonna is, is a team that's gonna win this football game. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, you just can't. I mean, you got them on fourth down. You can't afford to do stupid things. The last two games, Cincinnati and Washington, that the Steelers have played have been physical contests. Here's another one tonight. This one kept the drive alive. Ooh. Where these guys are really whacking each other, and Taylor picked up maybe a yard. That's Chris Oak, the nose man, and he's making up for the absence of one of the best who's played that position in the last 10 years, Casey Hampton, who was a pro bowler a year ago. Hurt and is on IR with a bad knee. Well, here they come down the line of scrimmage. Now look at these guys stretch out, and then Oak just meets him in in the in the in the hole. Third and now eight. Give that man some water. Here they come. Leftwich. Oh. Good to see throws, and it's complete to Edwards. Boy, Leftwich took a hellacious shot. Joey Porter was coming up the middle and just drilled him, and he hung right in there and threw a that's, strike. I, I'll tell you, that's a right hook. James Ferrier, first of all, number 51, is the guy that makes Leftwich move out. Right there. And then watch Porter. I mean, he just nails him. And that is a clean hit. Bang! Look at the pass, though. Oh, Look at him throw the ball. Troy Edwards on another key reception. Big third down for the Jags. Well, what a courageous play by Leftwich. He knew it was coming and never even flinched. Another blitz. Taylor wending his way for five. You want tough? Leftwich showed everybody just how tough he was in his senior season at Marshall. He suffered a major shin injury in the first quarter, was taken to the area medical facility, had x-rays. When he came back in the third quarter, just like the plot out of an old movie, he couldn't run on his own, so he'd make a play. His lineman would pick him up and carry him downfield. <laughs> he finished the game with 307 yards passing in two quarters. I'd have made up my mind to draft the kid in that instant. 
Fumatu Ma'afala inside the 21st down. Let's go to Susie. Well, Mike Byron says as far as that toughness, you either have it or you don't. He credits his childhood growing up in Washington, D.C. He said that was tough. Everybody in the neighborhood was determined to make him into a man, including his older brother, who occasionally liked to beat him up, as older brothers do. He also said they would play ball in the streets, and every once in a while, he would get hit by a car, but just bounce right back up again. So you can see why he's so tough on the football field. Susie Joy Porter hit him at least with the force of a car on that blitz. Fumatu Ma'afala lowers his shoulder near the 15. Farrier and Hagens with a tackle. I'll tell you what, this is as physical as I've seen a game in a long time. All right, here, here we come again. Just take a look at what this offensive line are doing. They are really taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers at the point of attack, and they're taking them back. You know that, sh that, that segment that they have uh, in, at ESPN jacked up? Yeah. Well, guess what? This we, gonna, we, we, got, we got three hours of it. <laughs> That's right. We have a three-hour special. I'm jacked telling up. you. This is special stuff right here. <laughs> the big tailback again inside the 15 to the 14. They need to reach the 10 which is four yards away. Brad Beaster, wired tonight. Oh. You know, you got you got got him wired, but you can, when you hear that, you can hear that, that hit all over the stadium. It sounds he, like you at dinner. <laughs> you know you did that once. I know, but it still sounds you like know you. I don't go to dinner with you. You don't even need a microphone to hear it tonight. <laughs> Third and four, Leftwich could run for it if he wants to. Throws instead. Edwards couldn't hold it. The big hit knocked it away from Ike Taylor and left, which could have gotten that first down on his own, but it hey, was open. Forget about it. You know, the hit, the catch, and all that stuff, left, which look what he does. And then has the presence of mind to get this ball out. He's got a bad knee, and he puts the ball right on target. Watch how he drags that, uh, that left knee. See how he just drags it? He can't get anything on the throw, and Troy doesn't have a chance to hold on to it. Well, I'll tell you what. I can't believe this. Some of the crowd's booing because they're going for the field goal. No, I think they're booing because they thought that he made the catch. Troy Edwards had the ball in his hand when he hit the ground, and then the ball came out. But again, that's that one thing where it's possession. 33-yard field goal attempt by the rookie out of Louisiana Tech, and he missed it. Josh Scobie, wide right. Well, now they're booing because they went for the field goal. Yeah, they are now. Steelers on top, 14-7 with 4.29 to go in the first half from Altel Stadium. No quarter asked tonight, none given. Bill Cowher talking to Joey Porter, who was hit with a 15-yard penalty to keep that last drive alive. And you, if you can lip read, you can see he's saying, yeah, I know, but you can't do that. Roethlisberger takes off. A lot of room and gets out of bounds at the 38-yard line. See, you can't, everybody sort of looks at the size of Ben Roethlisberger and says, oh, heck, he can't run. That's how he, that's how he made it happen in college, and that's really what he's done at this level. In every game, he makes plays. He wants to set up. Okay, he sees the opening. He's very decisive. Takes off and runs. And look at how fast he is. I mean, that's Mike Peterson chasing him down. Can't get to him. You know, but the thing that's killing me is Jacksonville said the one thing about him is we've got to keep him in the pocket. And they already know they can't let him to the outside because that's where he makes all of his plays. And that 15 yards was the longest run so far in the ball game. Jerome Bettis told us what impresses him most about the rookie quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. When you usually see rookie quarterbacks, they, the qualities that they don't possess early, which it is an indictment on them as a player, is just early on they don't have poise, they don't have the patience uh, in the pocket, they don't have an alarm clock in their head that goes off. Uh, all these things have to be developed through time, and he's 
he's come in um, in a couple of short weeks showing that he has all those things right now. Nobody, you're cla nobody classier than Jerome Betts. Roethlisberger trying to take off again. Under pressure, still buying time, and they got him this time. The young man who had been sacked 11 times in the last two games finally brought down tonight by the backup tackles, Elton Patterson and Derek Ransom. But all right, as you're watching Ben Roethlisberger here trying to escape and, and get the ball, he told us yesterday, he said, wait, let me just tell you something. I've been taking some sacks. I will not throw the ball away and into an interception. I, he said, I don't mind. We, I can play another play. Look at the graphic. The first four games, he was only sacked four times and threw four interceptions. In the last six games, he's been very, very cautious with the football. 18 sacks, just two interceptions. If there's one thing that Bill Cowher does not want him to do, certainly doesn't want the interceptions, but he's got to throw the ball away. One man, one sport, one nation. Three, starring Barry Peppers, Dale Earnhardt, premieres this Saturday at 9 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN HD. Hope you'll join us for that. Now, you don't want to be stupid on defense and commit one of those penalties that uh, gives him a first down. Screen, that's to Willie Parker, the rookie. Parker fighting for yardage out to the 42. Very, very, very safe play. Uh, yeah. You know, and this is what you do. You've got a young quarterback. Don't let him do something stupid, and they're not going to. Well, it's it's an awareness thing. You know, Bill Cower has told Ben Roethlisberger, I will continue to give you more and more if you prove to me you earned it. That sack said to Bill Cower, time to reel him back in. Jack Del Rio said that Pittsburgh, by their style of play, will let you hang around, and we are willing to hang around. This game should be one in the fourth quarter. It may be one on the last possession. Chris Gardocki will punt to David Allen, but the two-minute warning is coming up. Instead, we've got a flag at 2.03. All start. Offense, number 24. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. You know, they drew him offside. I'm not kidding you. Ike Taylor, number 24, is, is, is the gunner on the outside. These guys were talking to him and got him to move. What did he say? Boot? <laughs> now that's being distracted. <laughs> it really is. Now they wind the clock and it goes to the two-minute warning. The Steelers will kick it away when we come back in a 14-7 slug bet. Two minutes to go, first half from the Super Bowl city of Jacksonville, Florida, hosting Super Bowl 39 in a couple of months. And the Steelers in an extremely physical first half with quarterback Ben Roethlisberger and Byron Leftwich leading 14 to 7. Gardaki to punt it away to Allen. Returnable kick. Allen up to the 25. Good coverage by the Steelers as he got back to the 28. Let's check in with Susie Culver. Mike, how impressive has Ben Roethlisberger been tonight? And imagine where he'd be if he had more than five years at the quarterback position. In high school, the coach's son was the quarterback. Ben had to wait until his senior year, but he told us last night, if not for that, he likely wouldn't be a Steeler. Because if he had played more in high school, then he would have gone to a bigger school, and he probably would have been taken higher in the draft. Two touchdowns tonight, going for a rookie record 10 wins. He said everything happens for a reason. Guess he's right. Susie, such a mature, calm young man. I'm extremely impressed with him when we met with him last night. Leftwich guns this one, tipped in the air, tipped again. Flags are down. Steelers football. The interception by Pittsburgh. Ter Ferrier tipped it up in the air. Chris Hope eventually came down with it. This doesn't one, matter. This doesn't matter. Contact. Defense, number 27. Five-yard penalty. Automatic. Willie Williams called for illegal contact. What a break for Jackson. But it doesn't take away from the from the job that Ferrier just did. Ben Leftwich, uh, uh, excuse me, Byron Leftwich just rockets this ball. 
I mean, he just throws it so hard. That goes right off of Willie Williams' shoulder. Now it's bouncing around, and then you see Chris Hope come in and make the play. Ferrier's the guy that gets his hand on the ball. You talk about being aware of wherever you are in the field. James Ferrier is. Automatic first down, out at the 32. Left which underneath Ferrier. A very minor game. Ferrier makes the tackle on Fred Taylor. In a game like this, though, those to me are big plays on first or on second, even second down. Now you're at third and five. Excuse me. You're at second and five, and it's the perfect way to be as an offense moving along. And plenty of time on the clock. There's still two timeouts to go. Leftwich throws this one away. As I said, third and five. It's the That's perfect right. scenario to be in. Porter with good coverage on the rookie Greg Jones. That stops the clock at the 115 mark. Did you notice early in the game, Dick LeBeau, the defensive coordinator of the Steelers, came with a lot of different movement, a lot of people moving up front. Troy Polamulu up around the line of scrimmage. All of a sudden, he settled back a little bit. But I promise you, he won't sit back long. The numbers on left with so far. Ernest Wilford, number 19, is in as an additional wide receiver. Here comes a blitz. Leftwich, good protection. And this one almost picked off. Incomplete. Paul Amalo was in there again, along with Chris Hope on defense. And the Steelers secondary, very impressive so far. Well, I'll tell you what. I give the credit to this offensive line in, in the backs. These guys, I mean, there's a full-scale blitz coming. And watch them. They pick it up. That's which has time to throw. He's trying to get the ball to Jimmy Smith. Troy Polamulu is everywhere on this field. He was in there breaking that one up 15 yards down the field. Antoine Randall L. is back for Chris Hansen's punt. And that one will go out of bounds at the 16-yard line. The Steelers will have it with a minute one to go on the clock. Coming up the half, the key halftime show with Chris Berman. The fastest three minutes in television. Boomer's halftime heroes. And we'll take a look at some of the BCS matchups. That's coming up on the Kia halftime show. You know, the only problem is that we probably won't have many highlights in this game. <laughs> <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't like hitting, I'm going to tell you what, this is one of the one, uh, two teams that are really whacking each other. And, you know, it, they don't like each other. That's okay because That's they played against each other for the so division. long. They sure don't anymore if they did. I'd be surprised if Pittsburgh does anything but run the football at this stage. Jaguars ready for Deuce Staley that time, and the clock will continue to run. Remember Joey Porter in, in, in uh, the second quarter had sportsmanlike conduct? Well, I think Bob Whitfield took it personally. Bob Whitfield, number 70, watch this. Here's 55 quarter. What? Wait, 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 now. Bang! <laughs> oh, he just, he just disappeared. <laughs> well, he, <laughs> he just took him out of his shoes. Whitfield's in there at the left tackle position. And he said, now, what was that bust that hit me? And both teams... Very content to let this wind down and go to the locker room in a 14-7 game. <laughs> they have to go in and put some ice on. What a first half. They really came after each other. Let's check in with Susie. Well, Jack, you told us last night the key was being up to the physical challenge. What do you think? Oh, yeah, we're up to the physical challenge. I think mentally we uh, short-circuited on a couple things defensively. Had a questionable call, as you might have saw my reaction, but uh, we're playing hard. We're right in this thing, and we've we got to come out and be sharper in the second half. Thanks, Jack. All right, Susie. Susie, thank you. Our score here at Altel Stadium in Jacksonville, 14-7. Let's join Chris Berman for the Kia Halftime Show. All right, Michael, thank you very much, and uh, welcome to halftime. Of course, you're watching the Pittsburgh Steelers, 10 and 1 team. Can they keep on rolling? We uh, also had two other 10 and 1 teams, the New England Patriots and the Philadelphia Eagles. How would they do on this first Sunday in December? Let's start our fastest three minutes with those teams. And boy, speaking of a fast start, how about Donovan McNabb and the Philadelphia Eagles at home against Brett Favre and the Packers? 
Terrell Owens, 41-yard touchdown catch from McNabb. He's got 14 on the year. He and the coach have reason to chuckle. Andy Reid, then McNabb three times to Brian Westbrook. Five TD passes, first half, 464 for him. And Brett Favre, 36-game streak of a touchdown pass snap, 47-17 Eagles. Meanwhile, New England, Randall Gay picks it up. Willie McGinnis slows Gay down so he can throw a block. And the Patriots are off and rolling in Cleveland. They beat the Browns 42-15. So the Patriots and Eagles, who the Steelers beat, both have roared since then. Big game of the AFC West. Four interceptions by San Diego against Jake Plummer of the Broncos. That's by Jerry Wilson. Chargers lead 20-17 in the rain in San Diego. Darius Watts gets the first down, but tick, 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 tick. Chargers win 2017. They lead the division by two for Marty Schottenheimer. Three touchdown passes. Peyton Manning today, Marvin Harrison, Brandon Stokely, and Reggie Wayne. 44 on the season. The Colts over Tennessee, 51-24. After missing three games, Chad Pennington back to start for the Jets. Swing pass to Curtis, my favorite, Martin. Jets beat Houston, 29-7-8. Like the Colts, 9-3. Bengals down. 20 to 3, but Carson Palmer close to 400 yards. That a touchdown to TJ Usman Zeta. Bengals lead the Ravens 24 23. Chad Johnson, after the Ravens kick a field goal, passed out of the 10. Shane Graham, good. Cincy beats a winning team in the rough the first time since 1990, 27 26. Michael Vick, sworn again by the Tampa Bay defense, Derek Brooks and company. Two fumbles, two picks. Brian Greasy to Joey Galloway, Bucks. Roll over the Falcons, 27-0. Atlanta hardly looked like a 9-2 team. Don't look now, but here comes Carolina. Jake, daylight come, and you got a Delo. The Moosey Muhammad Panthers win in New Orleans, 32-21. They won four in a row. They're five and seven. Chad Hutchinson surfing in California a couple months ago. Starting for the Bears. Could they upset the Vikings at Soldier Field? And David Terrell with a TD. Jason McKee with a TD. Bears beat the Vikings 24-14. The Lions rookie Kevin Jones, 196 yards rushing. Detroit snaps a five-game losing streak. Beats Arizona 26-12. Washington over 20 for the first time all year. Portis with the shovel pass. Redskins beat the Giants 31-7. Meanwhile, A.J. Feely picked off five times by Buffalo. The big fella, Pat Williams, circles many wagons. Bills are 500. They win 42-32 at Miami. Chiefs, Raiders tied at 27 just before the two-minute break. Trent Green, Eddie Kennison, touchdown. Kansas City beats Oakland 34-27. And Mark Bolger, hurt. Chris Chandler in for the first time in a year. He's going to throw a touchdown pass to Torrey Holt. Rams beat the Niners 16-6. The 49ers 1-11. This halftime show is presented by Kia Motors. Kia, make every mile count. When we return, our halftime heroes would certainly include Donovan McNabb of the Eagles and the BCS Bulls are out. How did it all turn up? Who's playing for the national title? Back in Jacksonville, ready to start the second half where the Steelers lead the Jaguars 14 to 7. A couple of young quarterbacks out of the MAC performing very well in the first half. The edge so far to Roethlisberger, the rookie, who has nine straight victories, trying to make it 10 0. It's already an NFL record. Coakley and Taylor deep for the Steelers, who will get the ball to start the second half. Coakley lost the ball, got it back. Very fortunate for Pittsburgh. The Steelers at 10 and 1, trying to maintain home field advantage throughout the playoffs. If they keep winning, they have it. Jacksonville, they can jump over a couple of teams and actually be in pretty good playoff shape. Jacksonville has to have this football game. There's no question about it. They have to have it. Well, so far, Byron Leftwich has done an excellent job of running this offense, as has Ben Roethlisberger. The question is, which one is going to make the mistake that makes a difference? Right now, Pittsburgh has a seven-point lead, so it's got to be Jacksonville. It's got to come up with some kind of a play. Well, so much for experienced quarterbacks, right? And so much for big school quarterbacks. 
Here comes the blitz on Roethlisberger. Antoine Randall L makes the catch up at the 49. Let's go to Susie. Mike, I asked Bill Cowher what he thought of his young quarterback's play. He said basically, flawless, great. I mean, under pressure, he's stepping up, he's reading the blitzes just perfectly. And against this Jaguar D, they knew what to expect. I asked him if this is a benchmark for his young quarterback because he has struggled a bit the last two games. He said, absolutely, because with the attitude of this game, knowing for the Jags it's a playoff game, he is playing superbly. Susie, he has been terrific, and every pass, every run, somebody is getting absolutely drilled in this game. Ben Roethlisberger has done an excellent job throwing the football. He uses his feet well, but he manages to buy time with it. Does a nice job to Heinz Ward, hanging it right into the belly of the defense. Then he steps into one with a little more zip on it and lets Hines do the rest. And now another touchdown pass over the left shoulder behind Mike Peterson, the middle linebacker, to Jay Reimersma. Seven for eight, 136 yards. Doesn't get much better in a controlled passing game with the emphasis on the run. And once again, the swarming defense wraps up Staley. Donovan Darius led the charge. Roethlisberger, nine straight starts with 25 or less. That hasn't happened since Jim Harbaugh in 1994. And, and Ben Roethlisberger understands his position. He knows that he's not going to throw the ball more than ever more than 25 times. That is not the nature of the Steelers, at least not now. Two years ago it was, last year it was. Now they're a running team, and this is Randall L. What a move to get away. Randall L. left Dion Grant standing in his tracks, and now there's a marker down at the end of the play. Offside Jacksonville. Well, there's another one in the secondary. Well, I know the first one is offside Jacksonville. There are two fouls on the play, one by each team. Offside, defense number 93. Illegal block in the back, offense number 83. By rule, the penalty is offset. Replay third down. Chris Doring commits the second one. And that wipes out an 18-yard gain. That's huge for the Jacksonville Jaguars. You're down 14 points. Coaches have always preached, excuse me, you're down seven points. Coaches have always preached the, the first series on offense and defense in the second half sets the tone for what you want to do. The Jags have an opportunity to get the ball back here by stopping Pittsburgh on this drive. Third and seven. No blitz. Roethlisberger under pressure. Throws on the run. Stops shy of a first down. Outstanding defense by Duran Bolden, who comes in in their dime defense and has been playing with a bad groin for several weeks. And really, they didn't know whether he was going to be available. Just starting to get back into it. You talk about a shoestring tackle. There it is on Lee Mays. Just about gets him. But it's enough. Steelers send on the punt team. And now they go to an odd formation, and they're going to force Jacksonville to use a timeout. God, that's such great coaching. That was. That is such great coaching. You know how valuable those timeouts are at the end of a game, especially when you're in a game that's so close like this. Great job by Bill Cowher. ESPN Sunday Night Football, brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 39. UPS, what can Brown do for you? Mazda, always the soul of a sports car. And Miller, there's good enough and there's better than it has to be. Miller, good call. Our views from high above, courtesy of Goodyear and its fleet of airships, reminding you to take all of your journeys on the wings of Goodyear. The Steelers have changed their mind. They are out to go for it, at least to show they will go for it. Bettis is in a tailback on fourth and a yard and a half.
No, they're not going to go for it. Just trying to draw just, them offside. Just fooling you. So good coaching, and on the other side by the Jaguars, not to jump, and the wheels are turning on both sidelines. Well, and you can take a five-yard penalty. You're on a 40. You're really in, 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 a, in, a, in a zone that you really don't want to punt. You want to get it back a little further where he has a chance to. I love the disciplines of both of these football teams. Both of these coaches have got their football teams not only playing hard, but thinking as the game goes on. So often through the day today, I'm watching guys in the league just do stupid stuff, penalties, all the things that beat you. These two football teams aren't making those kind of mistakes. And Joe, speaking of that, Jacksonville has not been penalized tonight. That's oh, a heck of a Mike, job in this also Mike, That's discipline. Mike, don't say that. Have to point these things out. This takes a great bounce for the Steelers, and they cover it inside the two. 46-yard kick, no return. Tyrone Carter down to down. The Gardaki's punt, and Jacksonville will start deep in its own territory. On February 6th, Jacksonville will become the 12th city to host the Super Bowl, and they will play host the Super Bowl 39 right here at Altel Stadium over 76,000 seats. It'll be a great venue too. I mean, there's a bad seat in this house. This is the first time they have ever sold out every seat in this stadium since they had an NFL franchise, even obstructed view seats. That ball was dropped by Chris Fuamatu Maafala. And he had a chance to pick up at least five yards. We saw Ben Roethlisberger and what he's been able to do. Byron Leftwich is not going to move around a whole lot, but he's one tough customer. There you see him get leveled by Joey Porter right in the chest and delivers a strike. Now the rocket to Troy Edwards. Good job. Gets out of Chris Hope's grasp. Winds up in the end zone. Tied it up at seven at that point. I'll tell you, I like the first play they called. They're down there on the two-yard line. They ran a play action. He threw the ball. Got to catch it, though. That's true. Taylor back in as the tailback. Leftwich to throw again under pressure over the middle. A strike to Todd Yoder, the tight end. Yoder across midfield to the Steeler 43. Chris Hope finally got him, but he gained 55 yards. Chris Yoder was wide open. No one, and I mean, Todd Yoder comes out of there number 83. Nobody covered him. Well, it's like he wasn't even on the field. I mean, well, what a great job by that offensive line. You're backed up. Watch the protection. Look at the time Byron Leftwich has. Look at this line work. Steps up in the middle of the football field. You're right, Paulie. They're in a soul around him. There's nobody around him. They forgot about covering him. And that's Chris Hope, number 28, who left the middle of the field. And Yoder, long ago and far away, was a wide receiver when he played at Vanderbilt. Leftwich again underneath and missed Taylor. I don't know about you guys, I cannot remember a more physical football game. These people are just creaming each other. Well, and I'll tell you what they're doing, and they're doing it legally. That's, that's the amazing part about it. They are knocking each other around. That time, Joey Porter hit left which again, but they're, they're doing it legally. And when you hit quarterbacks, there's not a whole lot of room to hit no. them legally. And you can't get them around the knees, you can't get them in the head. It's just that I think he's got a flak jacket on his chest. Second and ten. A little toss to Taylor. No. He'll pick up maybe a yard. Larry Foote, who has done a nice job for the injured Kendrell Bell at inside linebacker. Oh, one of the stop. things you don't do, Joe, against this football team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, is any kind of delay like that. If you're going to run at these guys, run straight at them. Don't give these guys a chance to react. They've got too much speed on their defense. Kendrell Bell, another one of the Steelers that's hurt that Bill Cower hopes he'll get back. Of course, Plexico Burris is down as well. Big third down here from just outside the Steeler 40. Leftwich guns it to Edwards. Edwards, 10, 5, inside the 5, first and goal. 
Rocket Two fans made the tackle, but Troy Edwards, the one-time Steeler, is having a huge game. I don't believe that you can not go after Byron Leftwich. The Steelers decide to rush only four, but look at the pinpoint passing. Watch this. There's very little margin to put that. Deshae Townsend's right next to him, but it doesn't matter. Joe, I'll tell you, the guy that had a shot, look at left, which wind up and throw this ball. Ferrier, number 51, he really thought he was going to knock the ball down. That ball was already by him when he got there. That baby was humming. Taylor picks up a tough yard. Edwards, who had 358 yards receiving, coming into this game through 11 games, has 89 tonight. Here was a guy who was the 13th overall pick in the draft by the Steelers all the way back in 99. Really never produced. They looked for him to have big numbers, never did it. Boy, tonight's a coming out party for him. Average only 10 8 reception. Down here at the goal line, you got, you know, I mean, a quarterback draw would not be a bad thing with Byron Leftwich. He's not going to necessarily run away from anybody, but he doesn't have far to go to get to the end zone. Well, he's got an empty backfield right now, and he tries to fade, and it's over the wrong shoulder of Yoder. Yoder never even got turned around, and the ball went out of bounds, so now it's third down. See, I'm not a big fan of asking guys that aren't comfortable doing things trying to make plays. Here you're trying to ask Todd Yoder to, to catch a fade over the outside part of his shoulder and adjust his body. And Byron Leftwich just can't be that comfortable with it. When you get down towards the goal line, you've got to put the ball in the hands of your playmakers. Here you look for Jimmy Smith, or you look for Fred Taylor coming out of the backfield. But those are the guys that have to get open for you. Or Reggie Williams, even the young rookie, a big guy. Smith goes to the top of your screen. Taylor is back in the game. Now they'll throw to Smith. And that was defended by Ike Taylor. Well, hit Ike Taylor in the back with the ball. That ball should have been up in the air. It was thrown straight at him. And, and Ike Taylor... Which was drilled again. Well, he's been getting <laughs> drilled all night. But look at this. Taylor is there. He's trying to make a turn. And the ball hits him right in the back. Jimmy Smith has no chance. Now, left which is going to throw. And then he's going to get smacked. That's roughing. Okay, Boy, it sure is. If you, I mean, happen. It, it, that is that is roughing the passer. I mean, it is. If you're going to call the rules, call it that way. It's you, roughing the passer. You are all go also going to hear some people say, "Well, Ike Taylor was face guarding." There is no face guarding in the National Football League. You do not have to turn around. He did not interfere. He just was very fortunate the ball hit him in the back. When the quarterback lets the football go, you can't touch him. You can't handle him. That time, Kimo grabbed him and put him down gently, but still, you can't handle it. Hanson, who missed from 32, sneaks one in from 20. Excuse me, Scobie, and it's 14-10. It was a drive that Jacksonville started on its own two-yard line. They got deep in Steeler territory. They nearly went end-to-end -end with the thing and ended up with only three points. And Sean Leftwich shaken after the final series. Excuse me, Byron Leftwich. Just remember Sir Byron. Lord Byron. Whatever. <laughs> Byron, whatever. Byron. Steelers will take a knee, Coakley, and they'll take it out of the 20-yard line. Von Olhoff puts down the quarterback. Terrific ball game from Jacksonville, Florida. The Steelers on top of the Jaguars, 14 to 10. Pittsburgh starts from its own 20. 76,877, and maybe some standing room in here tonight. Roethlisberger, play action. Randall L. knocked away. Dwayne Washington got down and knocked it away. There is a flag back where they nor normally call. Motion penalties, holds, which is Holding it? offense on the 35. 10-yard penalty. 
a few first downs. Dan Kreider, the fullback, trying to protect Roethlisberger. Dan Kreider is number 35. He is the fullback, and he's just trying to protect his quarterback. <laughs> Kreider's one of those guys. Watch it on the left-hand side. Here he comes. That's, uh, that's a hole. You cannot grab anybody in this game. But will you talk about some outstanding coverage by Washington? Jerome Bettis comes in as the penalty moves them back to the 10. Here comes the blitz. There goes the blitz. Bettis picks up five. I want to show you what Ben Roethlisberger has done with our pass track. You get an idea. As the ball's released, there's the receiver, Heinz Ward. He's leading him in a direction. You have to throw to the intersection. You see the trail on the ball. Distance is 31 yards. Led the receiver by 11 feet and the Mac 11 yards. The thing is, is the arc into the soft spot of the zone is what is very impressive to me. He just loved the draw. I love it. Second and 15, Bettis trying to turn the corner, driven out of bounds at the 19. No, you see him, Bettis, run with the football. Deuce Staley was in, has been in this game. He's carried the ball 13 times for 37 yards. This defense of Jacksonville against the run has just been superb. Well, the other thing, too, is remember, Deuce Staley was off for four weeks. You're not expecting him to come in and carry 20, 25 times. They have a rare combination of two guys that can give you 25 carries, and Jerome Bettis is, you know, getting a little bit of break, a little bit of roll. You've got two fullbacks in this ball game right now, Kreider and Willie Parker, for protection. Third and 11. Roethlisberger can't find anybody. Now throw to the sideline. Lee Mays had a shot at it. Boy, boy he did. didn't drop it. Boy, did he put some zip on this thing. We've got two kids that can just felt flat throw. Ben and Roethlisberger, Roethlisberger yeah, is Roethlisberger limping. Yeah, has been limping ever since the half started. But I'll tell you, when, when he's moving up in the pocket, he's not limping. And he put, you want to put some heat on the ball? Look Watch this, man. That ball hit him right in the hands. You've got to catch that one, Lee. He limped in the Dallas game and did well, too. Gardaki comes on to kick to Allen. Oh! Allen is crushed. Ike Taylor. Holy <laughs> cow. My guess Boy, you can see that one coming. This is called perfect timing. Ike Taylor on Allen. Look, watch the catch in the hit. Catch him. I mean, it's that quick. What a great oh, job by man. Allen holding on. The way it was. Jacked up. What is that, what's that segment? I told you it's three hours. It's a three-hour yeah, special. Yeah, let's just replay the game. <laughs> yeah. Not a game for the faint of heart. From the 34. They'll whistle this play dead. Ball start. Offense. Number 80. Five yard penalty. Still first down. The first penalty assessed against Jacksonville. We've seen Ben Roethlisberger throw the ball on pass track. Now here's Byron Leftwich. Watch the velocity on this ball. There you see the distance he has to throw. He's leading the receiver in. That's Troy. Look at, look at the way it goes right by Ferrier's arm. Uh, it's only eight yards. He led him by eight yards. 54 miles an hour equals 93 yard, a 93 mile an hour fastball in baseball. Boy, I'll tell you what. This defense is now fired up. Hagen Olhoffen led the charge that time to get Fred Taylor. And the guy you don't talk about much is Clark Hagens, who number 53. He was there to, to, to put the finishing touches. But Van Olhoffen, Von Olhoffen, excuse me, he's the guy that really makes the play. And, and I mean, it, it's just amazing how fast this defense is. If you're going to run that kind of a play, Bill Musgrave, the uh, offensive coordinator, is going to have to add a bootleg off of it to stop people like Hagens from chasing it down on the backside. You want to run them to the perimeters, you better have somebody coming back to hold them. Fred Taylor, who's the top 10 in the NFL in rushing, averaging 1.9 yards a carry tonight against the number one rushing defense in the league. 
Taylor on the pass gets it up to the 29. Still not back to the original line of scrimmage, which was the 34. Both of these young quarterbacks maintain a discipline about what they want to do with the football. In third and long, they don't go running around out of the pocket to try and make plays with their legs. They go out and they get it out of their hands and put it in the hands. Of, you don't know whether Fred Taylor not is not able to break a big run for you. Get it in his, his hands as quickly as possible. Go after him. Go after him. They come with a blitz. Right down the middle again. A perfect strike to the rookie, Ernest Wilford. And almost every time they have come on a blitz, the Jaguars have somehow picked it up and left, which is thrown a strike. It's the same blitz. It comes from the right side. Everybody's doing a great job. Maurice Williams, the right tackle. Fred Taylor slides over. And look at Byron Leftwich step into this. The 15th catch for the rookie out of Virginia Tech. Yeah, these the balls. Comparison on Leftwich. But Michael, these balls are on target. I mean, you, you've, got, you've, you've got to catch them. Taylor swarmed under. Let's check in with Susie. Well, you saw those great second half numbers. That's why Byron is known as the comeback kid. He's led five game winning drives. But he told us even though people credit him, it wouldn't be possible if the 10 other guys didn't feel the same way. He says they all have that find a way no matter what mindset. And he said it's been a different guy each game who steps up. Everybody wants to be the guy. That's just Byron being modest. Boy, he's a nice, pleasant kid and obviously a tremendous talent. Sir. Hey, the hits he's taking tonight, man, you're not a kid. <laughs> Left which underneath to Taylor. And Taylor fighting for extra yards. About one shy of a first down, they need to reach the 25. You know, it, sometimes in games you see guys, you know, kind of slack off a little bit, take a break. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. We've seen guys do it. In this game, I'm telling you, every single guy on both offense and defense on both teams are going 100 miles an hour. If you're in uniform, you're rolling. Here again, good job of dumping the ball off. Let the back go make some plays for you. There was an 11-yard gain just by dumping it off to the back. If you slack off in this one, somebody's going to make sure you're hospitalized. <laughs> Huge play here. Third and a yard. I think this will be Pittsburgh offside. Byron was just trying to get out of there. No one really hit him. He was just trying to get out of the Obviously, way. Obviously, Byron's upset because it's going to go against Jacksonville, possibly. Here we go. Encroachment. Defense. Five yard penalty. Results in it. Never. Never trust a quarterback's reaction when he hears referees talking. Well, Byron Levitt, is it's actually it's Hoke, which is the guy that, that, that's offside. He makes contact, but Byron, he's just trying to get out of there. <laughs> Stumbles with well, that knee. He can't hold up very well. Get out of there. That's the smart part. Get out of there. Look at the Jaguars. One penalty tonight. A five-yard motion penalty. Playing smart football as a team. The drive kept alive. By the penalty, Fred Taylor. Boy, just nothing there. Give you an idea what Byron Leftwich has done attacking this Pittsburgh defense. Obviously, you know they get outside. Look at the middle. Three for four at under 15 yards. Three for three down the middle. All to Troy Edwards on big plays. Of course, one to Todd Yoder. I'm sorry. But just spreading the ball around. But work in the middle of that football field. If they want to bring safeties, that means there's only one guy someplace out there, and you throw it away from him. Fred Taylor brought his lunch bucket tonight. 17 carries, 28 yards, minus four in this half. Jimmy Smith went straight down the sideline. Leftwich threw it outside. It's incomplete. He went down again. Well, they saw Leftwich saw the blitz coming, and the hot guy was Jimmy Smith. And Jimmy Smith just took off and he threw the ball behind him. He was just thrown to a spot where Jimmy was supposed to be. Now, Jimmy Smith coming into this game had 55 catches. Troy Edwards had 33. Well, Jimmy Smith only has one tonight, and this has not been a very good team in the red zone. This is an area that Jack Del Rio said they had to get better. 
Third and long. Leftwich screen to Taylor. First down. What a great call. The Steelers poured through. Leftwich sold it and lobbed it over the rush. The Steelers only sent five guys. They had one blitzing linebacker coming in, but the play that was called was perfect. Everybody else just let Fred Taylor and the offensive line slip out. But the last three yards of this is all Fred Taylor because he's going to be hit before he has the first down. Here comes the contact on Fred Taylor right here. Now watch how far he gets after that. Good. It's another two and a half yards, and he gets the first down. But Kyle Braden to a great block downfield. Taylor gets a couple. Remember the last time the Jaguars were down here? They ran on first down, got down inside the two, and then threw two passes that were incomplete and had to go for the field goal. I still think it's either going to be Fred Taylor or Jimmy Smith down here. To it's me, not going to be Fred Taylor. Those, well, he just went, he just went out. Okay, then it's going to be Jimmy Smith or Reggie Williams. Their young rookie, I think, has he's number 11. Leftwich lost the ball, dives on it at the 12. He was going to run, look toward Jimmy Smith. There was nothing there. Then he was going to take off, and the ball just hit somebody, and he couldn't hold it. He tried to tuck it back in. He, he saw that he couldn't get it back to the outside. So he's going to try and run with the ball. But the most important thing of all when you're running with the football, make sure you have it. The Jaguars now with a huge edge in time of possession. Almost 50% more, and that's been the Steelers' forte all year. But you're losing 14-10. It doesn't do any good unless you can get the ball in the end zone. They're knocking Thank on you. the door. Four-man rush. Leftwich. That pass had no chance. Deshae Townsend right there to make a tackle, and they'll have to send the field goal team out again. For the Jacksonville Jaguars to go to the level that they want to go to, they're going to have to become a better red zone scoring football team. Touchdown. They've already missed the field goal down here. They're going for their th third. actually third try. But if he makes this, it at least puts it into a one-point game, and a field goal, if it stays this way, gives them a chance in the fourth quarter. Scobie is one out of two. He's hit from 20, missed from 32. This will be from 29. Boy, he's been right with everything tonight. Two of them have sneaked inside that right upright. One of them has missed, and it's a one-point game in Jacksonville. Monday Night Countdown at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. The best place to get ready for Monday Night Football. Then at 9 Eastern, Bill Parcells leads the Cowboys into Seattle to take on Sean Alexander and the Seahawks on Monday Night Football. It's about time for the Seahawks to crank it up for that stretch drive. Kick into the end zone again. Copley will bring this one out. And Copley straight up the middle for good yardage across the 30. Now a late flag comes in. Jaguars indicating it's against the Steelers. See if the referees agree. I love guys. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. That's <laughs> what they all said. I know. They know they did it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. He called it on me because he doesn't like me. Harriers had a full night. Well, I'd say there's Hasn't such, everybody. Oh, I see a football player. Shea Townsend. During the return, personal foul. Low box. Receiving team, number 33. Half the distance of the goal. Pittsburgh keeps the ball. First down. Russell Stuvance called for a 15-yarder. Well... No, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, see, this is, I'll tell you, it's a bad call. He's fallen down. He has no choice. He was falling down, and he never, he really never meant to hit the guy that low. You don't have to mean to do anything. Yeah, but, but you know, I agree with you. 
Right it certainly down. wasn't a dirty play. No, Let's it was not. It's a bad, it was a terrible call. Deuce Staley is the running back behind Ben Roethlisberger as the Steelers force back to their 11. Roethlisberger to throw. And caught by Randall L. That was nearly picked off by Mathis. Rasheen Mathis thought he had a touchdown, went for the pick, instead gave up a 17-yard gain. That's the end of the third quarter in Jacksonville. It's a one-point thriller. There has been playoff intensity in this one for a game that has a lot of potential playoff meaning. The Steelers with home field advantage on the line. If they can continue to win, the Jaguars would jump into that second wild card spot if they can pull the upset tonight over the Steelers. We start the fourth quarter in a one point ball game. Deuce Staley gets about eight up to his own 38-yard line. On that play at the end of the quarter, Roethlis ben Roethlisberger got lucky. What he does is he gets out here, and he doesn't get a whole lot on this throw to the outside. And that's, that's Antoine randall That's Mathis right there. Mathis is going to close on it. He's already breaking towards the ball. Now, if randall doesn't come back a little bit, that's gone the other way for seven. Rasheen thought he had the interception. Instead, it was an 18-yard game. Roethlisberger, play action in trouble. Never had a chance. Jason Gilden, another former Steeler, did not even look at the fake. No, they, they really didn't. They were good. They were coming on a blitz, and they're good. When you come on a blitz, you go through the back to the blitz. Take a look at this. They just forget about everything that's in front of him except the quarterback and then Jason Gilden they didn't block him I mean I don't even first of all I don't I like I didn't like the call in he, this intense of a football game you got second and two you already ran it for eight run it again he was one of the great pass rushers the Steelers have had as a linebacker playing a backup role in Jacksonville Randall L on the little swing and the Jaguars defended it well as they reached the 40. That's very close to the He got it. Now. Whoa. Antron Randall L. Did. He gets this, Michael. I don't know how the official can mark the ball from where he was to run all the way up and see where he went out of bounds. Wow. I'll tell you what. This, this is, is where, a, this if is, that's where the mark is, it's a first down. This is worth a replay. Antron Randall L. Watch him now. He goes back to the outside. He stretches. Well, I'll tell you what. Look where the ball is. Heinz Ward, number 86, is a, is a, just an excellent blocker. And look where the ball is. Well, it's hard for me to tell from that angle. Yeah, it sure is. Woo. If you don't have that on, he can reach that ball. But out. Jack Del Rio, it happened right in front of the Jacksonville bench. And you can see the coaches and the players over there really complaining about it. Now, because it was that close to them, they have challenged this. But well, the most important thing you have to look at with Antoine randall is where the ball is when his foot went out of bounds. If he's leaning that ball forward, okay, here he comes to the outside. Just look at his feet and see where his feet are when he reaches the ball out. The ball is, well, I'll tell you what. That one there doesn't Now, tell here's him. the this angle. This one will. See, he's, he's short. Out of he, he is, is short. short. He yes, is, he sure is. He's about a half a yard short, and that will tell you the story right there. This replay doesn't do it. The one before is the one that shows you that he did not make the first down. No, his foot is out of bounds, his, and the ball never got to the 40-yard line. It's really going to be about a yard shy because you see his foot go out of bounds. Then he reaches. Exactly. It's where the ball was when his foot went out. This is the shot right here that the official should make the judgment right. off of. Right foot is out. He is not across the first down line. Maybe three quarters of a yard, wouldn't you say? It's just short. Oh, it's going to be short. It, it's going to be on the other. It's going to be towards the 39-yard line is where it's going to be. Here's what's on the line for Jacksonville. Should they lose this challenge, they're out of challenges. They lost one in the first half. And they also lose the timeout, which exactly. is very critical. In a game like this, 
they'd they would be down have, to one. That's right. In a game like this, where you may have the last possession being important. But now we've said this before, and it's come back to bite us. This should be overturned. I agree, Mike. They should win this there's challenge. There's no way that this can be the Steelers' ball first and ten. After reviewing the play, the runner's right foot stepped out of bounds when the ball is at the 39-yard line. Fourth down and one. Jacksonville's not charged a timeout. Uh, first of and all, that's, they don't lose the challenge. Well, this is a bad spot too because the ball should be at about the hey. 39 and a half yard line. Uh, you know, you got to go where the guy. How can you tell that? Well, because you got to go where the guy's foot goes down. When his foot went down, the ball was almost at the 40 yard. Well, they put it beyond the 39. Thank you very much. I'm See? very happy with that. See? Just Calm relax. me down. Calm me down. Just it's, the game has got you all pumped up too. Yes, yes, yes. Relax a little bit. He wants fella. to go out there and hit somebody. No, Joe. he doesn't. No, he does not. He, <laughs> he didn't do it when he played, and he certainly doesn't <laughs> oh, want to do it please. now. I didn't get my leg broken. <laughs> I didn't. He didn't play long enough. Yes, I did. Bill yeah. Cower asking what had happened, and he will send on the pun team. There's, uh, I don't think any way they're going to gamble trying to run the ball on fourth and one this deep in their own territory at this point. Well, I think the thing you always have to do with the Pittsburgh Steelers is identify who is out on the field because you never know where they're going to sneak in an Antoine randall or somebody like that in an up-back. Well, they tried to do it earlier, and they forced the Jaguars to burn a timeout. Gardaki will kick to David Allen, the second-year man out of Kansas State, back at his own 22. Gardaki just crushed that one. And it kicks into the end zone. A 61-yard kick. Jacksonville's defense holding it on, holding its own against the NFL's number one rated unit. ESPN Sunday Night Football brought to you by Toyota. Choose any direction as long as it's moving forward. Phillips, experience TV in a whole new light. The new Phillips flat TV with Ambilite. MasterCard, there's some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. And Burger King, who reminds you to have it your way. Goodyear's Stars and Stripes, based here in Florida, providing these great views tonight. The three Goodyear blimps travel thousands of miles every year, covering major sporting events, news and entertainment events as well. I saw when I was out at the TPC over in Jacksonville playing a little round of golf yesterday. Nice. I can hear your bill being torn up as we speak. Okay. Taylor breaks through, pounds his way out to the 29 before he's pushed back. Well, yeah, but I'll tell you what, he came out of that hole, there was a hole in that line. These guys are just smacking each other. Fred Taylor, is, just watch how quick he gets back to the, to the right right to the inside. He just follows his blockers inside. Meester, number 63, is the center. He followed him into the hole, picked up nine yards on the play. There's an injured player on the field. But, you know, when you've got a center that pulls like that, gets out in front of you, that's moving. You see, you see the yards, 19 runs and only 39 yards. You just have to try and keep running against this defense. The yards aren't as important. Meester, tough guy, five years out of Northern Iowa. Here's the way it sounds when you're the center. Well, Man, a few words and many uh, grunts. He doesn't have to say anything. He, he, all the grunting just tells you exactly what's going on in there. All they wanted was a first down. They may have lost a yard as Kendrick Clancy, the backup nose man, was in on the stop. You know, th this, this is the plays I just don't like against the Pittsburgh Steelers. They, they, ran a, they try to run a quick draw. Well, it takes too much time. These guys are too fast. Meester in the middle. I'm going to tell you something. What he has done on Hope tonight is unbelievable. He has kept him at the line of scrimmage. And this Steeler defense on third and short, they're going to put as many people around the line of scrimmage. If you want to do something, 
you know, a play action pass down here makes a whole lot of sense because they've got everybody around that line of scrimmage and they're going to be filling in a heartbeat. One wide receiver. They try to run with Fulmatu Ma'afala and the Steelers just jammed it up in the middle and wouldn't give them anything. Von Olhoff and the last man up was the man who led the charge. You think it isn't dangerous in this pit? I'm going to tell you something right now. Look at all the bodies. They're moving. Von Olhoffen is the guy that just really makes the play. He gets around the tackle and gets inside. Man, that's a great defense. But also, it doesn't matter. They've got four Steelers there. You've got two Jaguars to try and block them. I mean, throw a play action pass. Back them off a little bit. Hanson to kick to Randall L. And he gets off a rock. Randall L. makes the first man miss, then lost the ball. Hit from behind, and the guy who missed to start with, Dick Cooper, was the man who came from behind and knocked it out of his hand. A nine-yard return after a 55-yard punt. One man, one sport, one nation. Three, starring Barry Peppers, Dale Earnhardt, premieres this Saturday at 9 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN HD. Pittsburgh takes over at its own 27, first and 10. Fourth quarter of a one-point game from Jacksonville. Staley trying to get outside. A flag down. That will be a hold against the Steelers. Aiken Adell makes the tackle. That hold Holding. down Oliver Ross. Offense number 79. 10-yard penalty. And two first downs. We'll check in with Susie. Welcome to Smash Mouth Football 101. Two quarterbacks rival since their days in the Mac. Ben Roethlisberger struck first. This one threatened the needle to his tight end, Jay Reimersma. Byron left with some magic of his own. It's the former Steeler, Troy Edwards. Both quarterbacks with so much to prove. It's been a battle and just a one-point difference in the fourth. Susie, I think we went by 101. I think we hit graduate courses in the first half. People getting their doctorates tonight. Long count by Roethlisberger. Straight back to throw. Ward makes the catch. Gets up to the 32. Roethlisberger to Hines Ward. Here's why this game is so important. Here are the divisional leaders. New England with a half game lead now over the Steelers who would have the tie breaking edge. But it's the wild card that's really interesting because Jacksonville can thrust itself above Denver and above Baltimore based on tiebreakers if they can win tonight's game and go 7-5. and five. It's huge for them. They know the playoffs started tonight here at home. Staley runs into a swarm of black shirts led by John Henderson, number 98. I'm, I'm, I just think in a game like this, Jerome Bettis is the guy you need to use because Jerome Bettis has only carried the ball three times in this ball game, and he's gained 17 yards, so it's a better than a five-yard average. Deuce Staley is not picking up the yardage. Jerome Bettis is the guy that, that can get it for you. Third and two. The guy in there right now is Willie Parker, a 209-pound third down back. Blitz coming. Roethlisberger stumbles, somehow gets away. Runs for the first down. What hustle by Roethlisberger. He picked up 20. I thought he had a bad leg. I guess, you know, when you're running for your life, you don't have a just Fear's a great motivator, isn't it? No, it really is. I'm going to tell you something. There's a flag down on, the, on this play, down about the 39-yard line. But you look at Ben Roethlisberger here. He goes back, and watch this here. When he stumbles, the ball on the ground keeps him up, and then he just takes off. There's no lip in this run. Three Defense. carries, 40 yards. Unnecessary roughly. 15-yard penalty, automatic... First down. That's, that's on Peterson. The defensive end is unnecessary roughness at the end of this play. But Ben Roethlisberger, I'm going to tell you something. What a gutty play that was. But this penalty happens at the end of this play. The ball comes out late. They rule he is down. 
And then the push comes. Elton Patterson out of Central Florida is Sorry, called for the push. I right say there. Peterson, it is Patterson. He just... <laughs> well, you know what? We talked about which one was going to make the stupid mistake to hurt you. In a game like this, every play is so important. Blitz coming. Staley falls forward across the 30 to about the 28-yard line. Steelers have just gotten into at least field goal territory, up by a point with 8.49 left in the game. The way I've looked at this football game is, is that the Steelers have gotten out of their character running the football. Just look at 19 rushes. That is not what Steeler football is. They haven't been held, holding time of possession. They haven't had the ability to be able to get out and control this football game. They're throwing a lot more, and it's been a problem for them. Staley again, trying to stretch it. Jaguars are right there, won't give him anything. Daryl Smith. I mean, you've got to know that Jerome Bettis, when he was in, I, I'm not pushing Jerome, but I mean, here's a guy for the last four games, carried the ball 30 times. He carried the ball rushing over 120 yards in all four games. Now, it just makes you believe that here he carried the ball three times for 17 yards. Do Staley can't do anything, get him in the game. Big play here, third and long. Parker comes in. Bunch three receivers to the left side. Blitz comes. Roethlisberger, not this time. They sent everybody. Dion Grant, Donovan Darius, both safety. Mike Smith, the defensive coordinator, said that he was going to go after Ben Roethlisberger. It's one thing to let him scramble around, but if he's got somebody in his face, he can't do it. Dion Grant, nobody to block him. Ben Roethlisberger sees him, doesn't even think about getting rid of the football, and then Donovan Darius decides to plant him. How many Grant times do you see both safeties, Joe? Well, that, is a, that was a very critical situation for Jacksonville because with seven minutes to go in this game, if Pittsburgh gets a first down, that's four minutes gone. And it took them out of field goal range. They have to send on the punt team. That sack was enormous. Still fourth down. They delay a game. They took it just so they could punt. Gardaki can punt the ball. I still don't understand why guys don't try to kick it out of bounds. Gardaki, an NFL record. Because they have this thing called pooch punts. Mm -hmm. Well over a thousand punts without a block. Jacksonville got some pressure on him earlier in the ball game, but he gets it out of there so quickly. And so long. And it will so come back out to the 20 with six minutes and 44 seconds left to go. Can the cardiac cats do it again? Five dramatic comeback wins this year. Who was your pick as the Sunday stud? Bledsoe, Jones, Manning, McNabb, or Portis? I'll go with Donovan McNabb. No lie. Aha, uh -huh. so did everybody else. 75.5% for an unbelievable performance by Donovan McNabb in Philadelphia against Green Bay. I think Peyton Manning's been on every week, hasn't he? Yes, he has, and he won most of them, and deservedly so. Leftward to the sideline, Jimmy Smith with a toe tap. The officials talking it over, and it's a catch. Well, is this a perfect pass? Why not? He's been throwing them all night. All you need to do is take it the way Byron left or take a look at the way Byron Leftwich has been able to throw all night. I mean, the Jimmy Smith on the outside, look where he has to throw this ball. This ball goes over the linebacker, and Jimmy Smith catches oh, the ball. Sweet. He's got it. No. Pretty on both ends. Oh, yeah. Leftwich straight back again. This one deep. Smith, incomplete coverage by Deshae Townsend. Byron left, which we saw him make that throw on the last play. He's been doing it the entire second half. Sets in the pocket, finds Todd Yoder in the middle of the football field with a 50-plus completion. Then over the middle to Troy Edwards. 
And then why not keep working the middle of the football field to Ernest Wilford? Three big passes in the middle of the football field against this Steeler defense. 169 yards in the second half. Fred Taylor got a great block on the outside. Still on his feet across midfield to the Steeler 49. He got a great Wilford, the wide receiver number 19, threw him a block. But I'll tell you something, Fred Taylor made this move to the outside in a heartbeat. He did not even hesitate. It looked like he might be going off tackle, but look at how fast he got back to the outside. That's outstanding blocking, but now Foot is there, number 50, to try to bring him down. Look at the power in Fred Taylor's legs. Guy, wow. is, a, guy is a great combination of speed and power. Taylor again. Airborne and then dives forward to the 46. And the way this drive is already taking time off the clock, who knows? This might be the last shot they have. They're down to five minutes and 17 seconds. Neither one of these teams is set up basically to, to move the football in large chunks in a two-minute situation. So right now you have to feel down one point with five minutes to go in this football game. The Jaguars are in control. Leftwich to throw under pressure, and they've got him back at the 49. Pressure came from Clark Higgins and Troy Polamalu, the safety, who blitzed again, number 43. Yeah, well, that was Clark Higgins that time. Clark Higgins is a linebacker on the outside. He came, they just got beat up front. Here comes Clark Higgins. Look at him inside. Nobody really blocks him. Greg Jones tries to block him. Now, keep in mind, Greg Jones was a running back at Florida State. A fullback is not necessarily, you would say, he's not necessarily a fullback. This is huge. Third and 12. 418 and counting. Here comes the blitz. Coming from every direction. The pass underneath. <laughs> Caught by Edwards, there is a flag down in the Steelers secondary. Ferrier with a tremendous tackle. He is so sure-handed. And this is going to go against the Steelers. You can tell the way Plexico Burris has fallen on the field. Before and the pass was thrown, illegal contact. Defense, number 28. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Chris Hope, the safety. It's a five-yard penalty, but it's an automatic first down. We talked about this in the beginning of the year, that the emphasis on this penalty was going to be important. There you see him. Oh, my goodness. He missed. He missed. He whiffed him. <laughs> he, got, he got penalized for a whiff. He got penalized for Jeez. an effort. Yeah. A five-yard whiffy effort. But that's what the well, officials what a, are looking for. What a tough call that is for the Steelers. How about ticky tack? Gee. No wonder they had people falling down. Leftwich quickly out to Jimmy Smith. Makes a move and got down to the 35. Boy, did he know where the defense was and immediately made a move to get free. The Shea Townsend, he committed himself to the tackle. Excuse me. I said the Shea Townsend. It wasn't him. It's... Coakley, Ricardo Coakley, I'm sorry. Coakley. It was Coakley. But you know what? You can't, Joe, you can't commit yourself. You've got to get yourself in a position to make the tackle and not allow him to pick up the extra yard. You can't do anything in football unless your feet are underneath you. If you're wailing and flying around, nine out of ten times you're going to miss it. Blitz coming. Draw play. Fred Taylor. Fighting for more yards. If he gets to the 25, it's a first down. He's about a yard shy. Clock continues to run. The National Football League is being given a treat by everybody having a chance tonight to see Fred Taylor run the football. Look at the power. This is the number one run defense in the National Football League, and so many yards he has gotten by himself. Holding on to the football in traffic, fighting for the extra yards. Fred Taylor tonight, 102 yards, 68 on the ground. He's cut passes for 34 yards more. 
here. He's just looking for a first down and very close at the 25-yard line where Ferrier and company again make the tackle. Let's go to Susie. Mike, before the game, I asked Fred Taylor about facing the number one run D in the NFL. He said, it doesn't phase me. He had a career high 234 yards against this team back in 2000. He says, as many times as we play it, they should be worried about me. They haven't faced a back like me this year. Man, has he been tough. Susie, he has been tough since he has been with this franchise. He is just a sensational running back. We've got a timeout on the field. It's a one-point game. Jags driving. The Jaguars have been the cardiac cats, the most fourth-quarter comebacks in the NFL. They're trying to do it again. It would vault them into second place in the wild-card standings if they can knock off the Steelers. Taylor on first down, got maybe a half yard, and that's it. Pittsburgh Steelers take a timeout here. That's their second. The Steelers trying to make sure they can serve as much time as possible. The Jaguars already within field goal range, and that's all they would need to take the lead. A one-point game with two minutes and 24 seconds to go from Jacksonville. The Jaguars driving. It is an enormous game for them with playoff implications. Well, Leftwich has not hurt him all night long, and don't take the ball out of his hand. Let him win it. Well, I, but I also think Fred Taylor's done a terrific job. Right here, if you're Bill Musgrave, you've got some plays listed there. These are going to be key plays for me. These are the ones that I need to call as the coordinator to give us the chance to be able to win this game. Taylor in there at the running back. Greg Jones, his blocker. Taylor inside the 20 to about the 18. This you know, would make it a 35-yard field goal drive from here. You know, we're, we're, we talk about Fred Taylor, we talk about Leftwich, but how about this offensive line? Look at the job these guys are doing at the point of attack. They're staying with their blocks. They're opening holes for Fred Taylor. These guys have done a tremendous job this evening. And you mentioned Kyle Brady, number 80. 278 pounds, was a tight end, came into the league, was a pass catcher, all of a sudden wound up with a new role, bounced around a little bit. Now he is an anchor at that end position. And they are doing it against the number one defense in the NFL, also the number one run defense, only giving up 75 yards a game. Tonight, the Jaguars have wedged out 100 yards rushing against this tough, tough Steeler defense. But Jack Del Rio said two things had to happen for us to win. We had to match their physicalness and we're on both sides of the ball, and don't be too anxious and try and force things. That's the game plan that they had coming in, and that's the way the game has gone for the Jacksonville Jaguars. If they can get a first down here, they could run the clock down all the way before trying a field goal. Otherwise, they have to try it now. And Taylor runs into a wall. This will bring up fourth down. And it will also bring up the two-minute warning. What a ball game in Jacksonville. 14-13. Back in a moment. Linda Cohn and Carl Ravitch standing by for Sports Center. They'll have Week 13 weaklings for you, the BCS Bowl picture, and how to end a dynasty. We're in Jacksonville at Altel Stadium where they'll play the Super Bowl. It's certainly been playoff intensity tonight. And Josh Scobie is on to try a field goal. He has a game-winning kick this season. He beat Indianapolis in the dome with a 53-yarder. He has been to the right tonight, although he's made two out of three, but missed one wide right. This one, perfect. And the Jaguars take the lead over Pittsburgh. All right, Baby Ben now gets the chance to start putting some notches in his gun. What did Jack Del Rio tell us yesterday, or day before yesterday? All they did, the Pittsburgh Steelers will let you hang around. If they let us hang around, that's all we want. 
Oh, what a nice kick here. Pressure up the middle. Good job. Gets great height on the ball. Nice little draw right into the middle. All right, here's the hold. You know, you get it. No one gives the, the, the uh, holder much credit. What he has to do is when he when you hold like that, you have to that Hanson. You've got to make sure the strings are straight up. Chris Hanson, of course, was a Pro Bowl punter until a uh, year ago. Decided after the six games to celebrate with an axe in the locker room and was gone for the season. Now he's back. We've seen him do a great job of kicking tonight for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now it is up to the rookie, Ben Roethlisberger, who has won all nine of his starts. Nobody had ever done that before. With no timeouts, he's going to have to be able to drive him into position. Remember, a field goal will win it. Brent Hines Ward back in the game. And they're, and they're without Plexico Burris, their big play guy. But they do have Hines Ward. Coakley and Taylor are deep. And they will start from the 24. Nick Sorensen makes the tackle. Can Roethlisberger make it 10 in a row as a rookie passer? What a scene. 76,000 plus on their feet. Roethlisberger. Ward, did he make the catch? No, the ball hit the ground. And a flag on the play. And Pittsburgh says it's against Jacksonville. Offside, defense, number 55. Five-yard penalty, and play first down. Greg favors the linebacker who is playing defensive end. Called for an offside. That stops the clock at 145. What's really important, if you're Jacksonville, you want to keep everybody inside the boundaries. Don't let them stop the clock. And Pittsburgh has zero timeouts. Roethlisberger underneath. Randall L gets what he can out of it, then runs out of bounds in front of Mike Peterson. Antoine Randall L, when I watch him after he catches pass, his legs are going 100 miles an hour. I mean, he can really run fast. You know, the other thing, I love watching Ben Roethlisberger in this situation. He's just, he's looking down at his play sheet right now. He's just calling his plays, telling the guys what to do. Strolls back into the shotgun. Not in a hurry. Since the Steelers only need a field goal, there's really plenty of time on this clock. And they got plenty of time to use the middle of the field. Here comes the blitz. Blitz coming. Roethlisberger to the sideline. That will stop the clock at the 41-yard line. And the catch made by Lee Mays. And he was drilled by Washington. What a nice job he does of hanging in the pocket. Lee May stepping up. And this has been the thing about the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've had guys step up and do the job for him. Look at him just stride. He's getting rolled around, but he strides right into it. Kawaki Thomas comes in around behind him. Roethlisberger, what a night. 13 out of 15, 212 yards. This kid is for real. Draw plot. It's Parker. And Parker reaches the 29. The clock will continue to run. You know about all the calls that were made tonight, all the play calls were made tonight. That one right there was fantastic. Nobody on, on Jacksonville's defense expected them to run a draw in that situation. But as you said before, they have plenty of time. They've got over a minute. Jacksonville's defense running around a little bit confused on that one, the throw. Inbounds, Lee Mays makes another catch. The clock continues to run. Still plenty of time for Pittsburgh. We talk, they can ground the ball and stop the clock. We talked about the job that Jacksonville's offensive line has done. How about the job these Steelers have done tonight, picking up the various movement and blitzes from, Jack, from Jacksonville? Both teams have been sensational. He's going to... You know what? No, he's letting the clock run down. Yes, he's he spike is. The ball. This is so smart. He's going to spike the ball. They're just taking their time, use all the clock. This is just really great clock management. It's brilliant because they are already where they want to be. They do not want to leave Jacksonville anytime. Nope. 
Nope. But I'm going to tell you, it's second down and one yard. They had all of their time on the clock. They ran it down to like two seconds, and then he spikes the ball. And now they're not even going to bother. They're going to go with Jeff Reed to regain the lead because if they might make a play inbounds, the clock could run out if something bizarre happens. But they're also doing it on third down, so if they muff it, they have, they'll have a chance on fourth down. Reed from 37 yards, and the Jaguars will use a timeout. Oh, don't go away. 23 seconds left. The Steelers are going to leave it in the hands of their place kicker, Jeff Reed, as the rookie quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, trying to win his 10th as a rookie. He's already won his first <laughs> nine. Nobody had ever done that. This will be a 37-yarder by Jeff Reed. And he's five out of six between 30 and 39 yards. It's good. And he drills it. Looks like Ben has started his own new streak. Hold on, boys. There's 18 seconds left to go, and Jacksonville has one timeout left. And several thousand Steeler fans who made the trip down here are celebrating. And you mentioned that Shelby made a 53-yarder against the Indianapolis Colts to win it. Now, that was a little bit of a different story. It was in the dome. So you've got to assume. Look at this. Boy, what a great kick. I mean, that thing is right down the pipe. Ben Roethlisberger brought him back. Look at <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's, that's Jay Reamer's Mustang. Boy, next he, to is, crutches. he is just cool. He has shown us great leadership, tremendous poise. His friend from the Mac, Byron Leftwich. They went out to dinner last night. One will be extremely happy when this is over. One will be heartbroken. Again, so much for experienced quarterbacks. <laughs> you got, you got a second year guy, a first year guy, and, and these guys are lighting it up. Just the little things that you've seen Ben Roethlisberger do protect the football. No and Leftwich. No interceptions. And Leftwich. Then let the clock run down on second and one and then spike it so that Jacksonville doesn't have time on the clock. Let's see if the Steelers, and that's the feeling they have here, a sellout crowd of more than 76,000. Let's see if the Steelers squid this one or if they kick it deep to Allen. They're going to squib it in the middle of the field. Picked up by Jones. And Greg Jones... Still fighting his way out to the 39-yard line. 11 seconds to go. They're going to need 39. They're going to need uh, about another 27, 28 yards. But you have a timeout. Now right. The, now here, if if I'm if I'm Dick LeBeau, I do not play a zone defense. I do not give Byron Leftwich a chance to be able to stand in the pocket. But more importantly. I don't give his receivers a chance to get down the field with any depth. That's what I would do defensively. So what would you call? If I'm Jacksonville, I'm going to let my guys have been blocking it up and try and get it to the middle of the field. Well, they need 27 yards on one play to give them a 52-yard attempt for a field goal. So you've got to get, what, at least 24 for a 55-yard try for even an outside I shot. think you. I think you have an opportunity for two plays here. I think you can pick up 20. 15 to 20, and then try and get one towards the sidelines and out of bounds. We've got an injured Steelers on the ground. Ben Roethlisberger, we talked about him having the opportunity for a comeback. This is what he did on the last drive. It starts out with him stepping up and making the play to Antoine Randall L. Get out of bounds. Then make the big throw against the blitz. Hanging in the pocket. Get it out of your hands. Guys making plays for you. Lee Mays with that big one. And then you saw the big kick by Jeff Reed. Chidi Iwuma is the injured player who was able to make it off with some assistance. We're down to the last 11 seconds. Three-man rush. 
Leftwich. That's complete. And they will use a timeout at the 41-yard line. From there, 58, 59, 60 yards, depending on and the spot. It. And they it. will try it. Why not? 48 yards in the pregame was his longest. He hit a 53-yarder this year, but that was indoors in Indianapolis to win. I'm going to tell you one thing, the Pittsburgh Steelers, you must do. And, and they, this is a disciplined football team. Stay on the line of scrimmage. Don't do anything stupid. This will be from 60. Just a little right. It was right like you said he was right all night. Holy cow, what a blast he hit. He nearly made a 60-yard field goal to win it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look at this. He's got he's got the distance. There's no question about the distance. He was just a little bit right. Oh good grief. <laughs> what a kick by Scobie. What a game. When you've got to wait on a 60-yarder to see whether it's a foot right. Let's go to Susie Culver. Ben, a rookie record, 10 wins. Describe your emotions on that last drive. You know, this is a great win for this football team, for the offense, defense. We didn't have our best game today, but when you find ways to win, uh, it always feels good. What are you saying to the guys in the huddle? I say, guys, let's go down one more time. You know, let's complete a couple balls, get down the field, give Jeff a chance to win this game for us. Finally beat your buddy Byron Leftwich. <laughs> what did you say to him? Nothing. You know, I just just told him great game. He's a great quarterback. You know, he'll sit back in that pocket and throw the ball all day, and you know, it feels good to finally get him. Congratulations. Thanks, appreciate it. Brilliant win for the Steelers. A crushing loss for the Jaguars. Stay tuned for Sports Center coming up next for Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, Susie Culver, and our entire ESPN crew, the best in football. This is Mike Patrick saying good night from Altel Stadium in Jacksonville.